it possible that multiple sclerosis can be cured? According to these medical mavericks, the answer is yes. This is a paradigm shift in the way we understand the disease. They argue that an infection is what triggers the disease. The immune system sort of knows it's there but can't do much about it. Incredibly, the treatment has been right under our noses. Here, I explore an unpopular medical theory that has been flying under the radar until now. At this home in London lives a man who believes he's cured his wife of an incurable disease. I don't like using the word cured because it's sort of tempting providence, but uh, <laughs> I feel in my heart of hearts that the disease has gone. If it wasn't for David, I would be probably dead or curled up in a corner of a nursing home, useless to the world. Well, my friend, meet the artist, Sarah. Hello. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing? Sarah, a talented artist, was diagnosed with MS in her 20s. My right arm decided to go numb. I couldn't use it at all. It was just hanging in front of me. Sarah was told that there was absolutely nothing that medicine could do for her. I, I was filled with fear. Um, here was a person I'd married, a, an alert, intelligent, bright, creative person who, uh, to be quite blunt, was, was losing her mind. It's widely accepted that MS is an autoimmune disease. The body's immune system destroys the myelin sheath around nerve fibres. Patients develop lesions in the brain and spinal cord and eventually lose their ability to think and move. So this is, this is essentially damage in the brain? It's damage, yes. David, an expert in infectious diseases who used to treat MS patients, drew on all his experience to formulate a revolutionary theory. He believed that Sarah's MS was triggered by an infection. The bacterium he honed in on was called chlamydia pneumoniae. When one thinks of chlamydia, one automatically thinks of venereally transmitted chlamydia. Chlamydia pneumoniae is a respiratory pathogen. It's spread by a droplet infection, coughing and, and sneezing. Infection is so common that it's likely you've been exposed by the age of 20. The bacteria finds shelter inside blood vessels and nerves, causing low-grade infection over decades. Convinced that Sarah's body was under attack from this bacterium, David worked tirelessly to find a solution. Together with a colleague in the US, he formulated a cocktail of antibiotics to eradicate this insidious bacterium. It's been shown that a single antibiotic doesn't eradicate the organism, and these three antibiotics work together in a very specific way. How long does the treatment go for? I think the treatment should be for a minimum of a year. A year? Yes. That's a long time on antibiotics. It's, it is a long time, but it's a very, very difficult organism to eradicate. Sarah's neurologist insisted she would never regain her function. But David showed me the lesions on Sarah's MRI scans before and after treatment. The results were nothing short of miraculous. I've never seen anything like it before. Some lesions have quite literally vanished. Sarah had been numb from the waist down and literally couldn't feel her legs. Sensation came back fairly quickly in, in, uh, in five or six months. Did this shock the neurologists? Uh, the neurologist uh, wouldn't see the scans. He says, okay. uh, he says, I'm not looking. So did this, did this surprise you? It uh, absolutely shocked me. 
I think very few people know about the possibility of uh, a chlamydial causation of MS, and therefore very few people will understand the possibility of treatment. The ignorance about this organism is immense. The problem is, this bacterium is notoriously difficult to detect in patients. Only a few labs in the world have the expertise. Technique is a limiting factor, and to say you don't isolate something as difficult as this is... Like I say, if you search a haystack for ten minutes and say, I see no needle, <laughs> really, you're not telling anyone very much. This kind of paradigm change in the way we understand and treat disease often causes dissension among the ranks. And this wouldn't be the first time that a radical theory was dismissed by mainstream medicine. Australian scientists Warren and Marshall went to extraordinary lengths to prove that stomach ulcers were not caused by stress, but by a bacterial infection. Marshall took the ultimate leap of faith and infected himself with the bug. I said to my wife, I took the bacteria, I've got the illness. And she said, you did what? <laughs> Fortunately, a simple course of antibiotics cured him. The pair won a Nobel Prize in 2005. Similarly, in 2008, Italian doctor Paolo Zamboni was ridiculed when he proposed a whole new approach to MS. He claimed that instead of treating nerve damage, doctors should be focused on blood vessels. He believed that MS was due to a narrowing of the veins in the neck. Zamboni's theory gave hope to millions of MS sufferers. But many neurologists scoffed at the idea, including Vicky's. He was very dismissive, just didn't feel that it had anything to do with MS. And that was the end of the conversation. How did that make you feel? I was really angry, actually. The good news is that the flow on the right side is still very good. So Vicky turned to Australian vein specialist Dr Paul Thibault, who says in his experience with MS patients, Zamboni's theory has credibility. The veins have been known to be involved in multiple sclerosis since uh, the disease was first described in the 19th century. But this fact has really been ignored uh, by the neurologists in particular. Dr Thibault encouraged Vicky to have the controversial procedure called a venoplasty to correct the narrowing in her neck veins. The results were virtually instantaneous. The first thing that I noticed was my eyesight. Amazing. Just incredible. From pre-procedure in the waiting bay, couldn't read the signs on the wall, to coming out and being placed in the same bay, and wow, there they were. Everything clear as a bell. This is my mobility scooter that I used to have to use to go out anywhere, shopping, any of those sorts of things before I had the venoplasty. Happily sitting here gathering dust now. So your neurologist doesn't know you've had a venoplasty done? No, no. So what does he attribute this miraculous improvement to? Uh, some patients, for some reason, just do better than others, and I just happen to be one of those, perhaps. It has to be said that not all patients have had the same success as Vicky, and there's a 50% chance that her veins will narrow again. Dr Thibault agrees with Zamboni that MS is a vascular condition. But he also believes that narrowed veins are caused by a chronic infection. And like David Weldon, his focus is on chlamydia pneumoniae. CPN is on my hit list because it is the bacteria that fits all the requirements. It is known to affect the lining of blood vessels and in particular veins. It is known to involve the nervous system, is able to cause immune effects, so it fits all the features that we actually see in the symptomatology of MS. If you want epidemiological proof that MS is caused by an infection, you only have to look at the isolated population on the Faroe Islands. 
Prior to World War II, there was no uh, instance of MS in those islands. In 1940, the islands were occupied by British troops, and by 1945, there was a small epidemic of MS in the islands. From this, it was postulated that British troops brought MS to the island. But if infection with chlamydia pneumoniae is so common, why doesn't everyone develop MS? Some other factor, like it could be low vitamin D levels or genetic predisposition, makes them develop the secondary or persistent form of the disease which affects the neurological tissues and the veins. I don't know why the neurologists aren't offering them at least minocycline, which has been shown in a number of studies, to benefit MS. Why? Why are neurologists turning their back on this? I think the neurologists have gone down this track for many years and they would have trouble uh, admitting that they may have gone the wrong way and therefore um, they continue on with the same uh, line of thought. For a neurologist's perspective, I visited respected MS researcher, Associate Professor Robert Hurd. We'd love to see more data about it. In a candid moment, he did admit that Dr Thibault's theory was plausible. In an unguarded moment, maybe after a drink or two, a couple of neurologists might say to each other, you know, it just has to be an infection, doesn't it? And in fact, I've had that exact conversation with well-known MS specialists, but we just can't put our finger on it. But despite the anecdotal evidence, Dr Hurd warns that responsible treatment is all about evidence-based medicine. If we're going to do experiments in patients, we're going to use them as guinea pigs, we need to have that clinical trial informed by some solid science. But clinical trials to obtain solid science requires funding, and getting it is virtually impossible. Why haven't the clinical trials been done? The problem is that the antibiotics used have been around for many, many years. They're all off patent, they are inexpensive, and there is no um, profit in it. So, as the debate rages on, what hope is there for MS sufferers? We're looking at treating the cause of the disease, and therefore, if we can get patients early enough, we could cure MS. But it's this sort of statement that worries neurologists. I think people have used the C word and talked about cures for as long as MS has existed. And I think to use the word cure at this stage of our scientific understanding is highly irresponsible. Dr Thibault has decided to put Vicky on antibiotics to see if she makes further progress. Like Vicky, David Weldon knows that clinical trials will take time. And it's time that MS patients can't afford. The clinical trials are not there. It's, um, that has to be said. It's, um, and I wasn't going to wait for them either. <laughs> you know, I'd be a widow now if I was waiting for, <laughs> for clinical trials. Sorry. <laughs> It may be too early to tell if we stand before a cure for MS. But if we do, these men will be remembered as the pioneers. 